hoy ya. Ah, muy bien. Y buenos días, buenos días. Vamos a empezar con una pregunta que es pregunta que viene de Duolingo. Y es buena pregunta. What a good question it is. I've got to get my Spanish things going here, my Spanish keyboard. Ok. ¿Qué pasa? La pregunta es, la pregunta es en Duolingo. Había un ejercicio, there was an exercise, había un ejercicio con una persona que se siente feliz, a person who feels happy, y la respuesta, the answer, was given as two possibilities. Uh, la niña, fue, fue niña, ¿no? Niña. Yes. Chica. La niña es feliz o right. también, también una frase correcta, la niña, uh, la niña está feliz. ¿Y cómo es, pos cómo es posible? ¿Cómo es posible? Because you're not permanently happy. Sí, ¿cómo es posible tener dos respuestas correctas? ¿Cómo es posible tener dos respuestas correctas? Ah, ok. Vamos a ver. We're going to see. Y sí, depende de la situación, depende del contexto. De, todo depende del contexto. There are certain words, not all, but some descriptive words that can do a flip-flop between ser and estar. Hmm. Uh, okay, and here is why. La niña es feliz. The girl is a happy person. We're talking about her general day-to-day Uh, demeanor. Uh, her, 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 yes, her general demeanor. You know, what her personality type is. Okay. That she is generally an upbeat kind of person. Okay. La niña está feliz. Uh, the girl is happy. And it is just referring to uh, now, present time. Uh, so, you know, a kid opens a present, the context is probably going to be, la niña está feliz, the girl's walking with her puppy, she, the context is probably, la niña está feliz, uh, the context is, uh, you know, maybe you a school counselor, a Right, right. Compared to somebody else, compared to her siblings, la niña es feliz. If we're talking about her okay. general overall demeanor, her general overall character. Okay. And that can, that can happen with triste. You know, that can happen with a few things. Sometimes using ser or estar completely changes the meaning of a word. Now, feliz is, uh, or if you use feliz or Triste, you know, the, the meaning of feliz or triste would not change. It's just whether it's an overall condition versus a momentary state. And hold on to the idea, uh, that idea of momentary, because we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but um, feliz and triste won't really change in terms of what those words themselves mean. But sometimes some words do change in meaning, depending on if you use ser or estar. Okay, okay. so uh, un, unos ejemplos. So we'll do just a couple of examples because you know, we, we may want to revisit this as another reminder lesson, but uh, not today. But the thing I'll tell you is a word like uh, listo, because this is a word that uh, people use all the time. Listo, lista. Um, Uh, eres listo means you are smart, hmm. clever, sharp, mentally, okay? Because again, listo there is, you're right there with it, sharp, okay? But uh, 
Estás listo, something you probably hear, or estás lista, you know, as a question or as a response. Estás listo, the word listo no longer means smart or clever. So unlike feliz or triste, which don't really change the meaning of the word, here the meaning of the word changes. Estás listo, you are ready. Mm. Meaning you're set to go, okay? Set to go, set to start a task. Uh, um, so, you know, changing from clever to ready is kind of a drastic flip-flop. Um, another word that does something like that is uh, maduro, uh, uh, which uh, es maduro, es, es muy maduro, he is mature, he is a mature person, he is all grown up, Not no baby stuff, yeah, but <laughs> when we talk about things, sometimes we say está maduro, Maduro, we, uh, I got the fat finger thing going on and, okay, está maduro. And uh, we're talking about something is ripe. You know, mm. las uvas están maduras, the grapes are ripe. So, you know, sometimes words, although the, the difference in meaning between mature and ripe is really not all that vast as it is with, you know, clever and, and ready, but, Things like that do happen, and that's kind of worth doing some, maybe a little review exercise sometime this this uh, summer. Vale la pena. It's always worth it looking at that. Um, más preguntas. Any other questions on on Duolingo stuff? Cindy, tienes algo? Oh, and you're on mute, Cindy. So I need you to take yourself off mute, please. Por favor. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> doing the. Um, that's part of the homework assignment. And on this segment that was about gustar, one of the examples they gave was les gusta viajar. And next to it, their definition is we like to travel. Is that oh, right? And they did that with les? Yes. Ooh, then they have an error. Yeah. Oh. Uh, les, <clears throat> you could maybe respond to a question, les gusta viajar. You could respond if it were a question. You could respond with no school stuff. But les gusta viajar would either mean uh, you guys like or uh, they like. It'll be one of those two. Okay, It'll uh, be either for ustedes yeah. or for they. So that's a typo error somebody has. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't completely off base. That happens. I'm not the only person who makes mistakes. Sometimes even <laughs> big sites make mistakes. No, it's not me. And that's good that you caught that. But wow, that does not look right because... It's not. Um, okay, vale. Um, what I would like to do for today, lo que quiero hacer, what I want to do is, I want to do a lot of practice with verbs that are like gustar. Uh, so I'm gonna show you so that you can pull up the page. And I need to make this bigger so everybody can actually see it. Uh, Maybe just a little bit less big. Okay, so if you printed this page off, this is the one that we're going to use in small group practice, although we're going to do some run up, uh, you know, some things that lead up to this. Uh, this is the long, long, long page, and I've just made it look bigger. Um, and we're using. Uh, uh, well, a variety of words that are like gustar, uh, a variety of words that, that work like gustar. So we're going to have this. So it, if you use it as a second screen, time to maybe find where you save that. Uh, if you pop up two screens, if you have it printed off, time to pop that up. And I probably should have uh, kind of taken off the like because we have lots of verbs that do that. Okay. Uh, magnifico. So just so you have time to get that ready. Um, we're going to work most of our time with those verbs that are like gustar and talk about some of the verbs that do that and, and why they're important and why do you have to know that? Because, gee, it seems kind of, you know, counterintuitive with all the other stuff we learned uh, about what verbs do. But 
these drugs are actually super, super common. So most of the time we'll be about that. We're gonna have an, an actual video where I wanted to get to last week and we didn't have time. A video that I'm gonna actually step us through because if I send you off to watch it on your own, it's entirely in Spanish and some of it may escape you, may go over your head because he does talk at kind of a uh, high level, but he actually has a good cultural thing that we're gonna pull in uh, a cultural element of Gustav, uh, which probably you will be unaware of. It will make sense to you once we explain it and he'll explain why uh, it's important. And then we're gonna come back to that, that second thing, uh, that, that, that practice a second time and take a look at it again. Okay, so those are the big, big items. Uh, I do want to do two things before we get to that. One is, if you got one of the little novelas and you did any reading, do you have any questions from the reading? And this, these will just be like a, a question out to the floor. It can be absolutely anything ranging from vocab to the structure to turn a phrase, some colloquial thing that you're like, I read this, but you know, if you translate it, it doesn't make sense. Anything that you had from reading. Sydney, can I say you? Um, this, uh, this might show how I'm not quite keeping up, but <laughs> that's okay. Everybody's good. One place, um, actually it was in more than one place. Uh, they say, le dice Mindy. How, why is the le in there? Ah, le dice Mindy. Okay. Está bien. Mindy. Let's take a look at Lady Samindi. Yeah, uh, you're Say way Mindy. ahead of me. Okay. Well, you know, and these are, are going to be uh, any questions that people have. So, you know, people may have very, very different questions. And uh, you probably saw that repeated at least twice, yes. maybe more. Yeah. Lady Samindi. Okay. And I know this looks kind of reverse. Well, it is a reverse. You're used to subject and verb, right? Subject and verb. And they, they flipped the order of who's doing it and what they're doing. Le dice Mindy means Mindy says to him or to her. It could even be you, but it probably isn't you said you there in that particular thing. She was probably talking to somebody. It was reporting whatever it was that Mindy said. Le dice Mindy. Um, okay, so an, an example, un ejemplo. Um, por ejemplo, somebody may phrase something as, ah, no tenemos tiempo hoy. We have no time today. No tenemos tiempo hoy, le dice Mindy. No tenemos tiempo hoy, we don't have time today. Le dice Mindy, Mindy says to her, or Mindy says to him, because the le might be referring to a guy or a gal. Uh, and le dice Mindy just means that. Le is telling who is being spoken to, not who's doing the talk, 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 okay? Um, and, you know, could just as easily be Les dice Mindy. Uh, if Mindy is talking to a bunch of buddies, Mindy says to them, right? And the les would mean to them. So that's what that is about. Uh, does that answer your question or do you need a little more background for that? I, I just know one more question to follow up. Is the lay necessary because it's the two of them having a conversation? So you uh, know who you're talking to. <laughs> and buena pregunta. That is a super, super good question. Why can't we just say dice Mindy? Well, because no, because that would sound weird. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that is no. Very infrequently will anybody, it, 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 it is much, much more common I'll go out on a limb, way out on a limb and say 90% of the time, probably even higher. There's gonna be a little pronoun in front of that 
that verb dice because you got to be saying something to somebody and that that le or the if it's a me if it's a te if it's a nos if it's a les uh, decir is hardly ever used isolated by itself hardly ever uh, <clears throat> dar that verb give is hardly ever used isolated by itself because you're always giving something to somebody so hardly hardly ever uh um i'm gonna say almost never will verbs like uh decir or dar uh be used in isolation by themselves even i could go out on a limb and say a verb like contar which contar um is contar in, it means to it can mean to count but it can also mean to tell a story and contar generally implies you've got kind of a long bit of of information you're, you're literally telling a story rather than just giving a bit of information that's short so contar think of it as a long more prolonged activity than decir Okay. Um, uh, verbs like that, you'll almost never hear them used without a word le or les or me, a little pronoun, because somebody almost always receives the benefit of that action. I mean, that's just the way those verbs roll. That's the way they go. Um, it, it's, it's the meaning of the verb that, you know, you almost never say, well, you might say, I'll pay now, sure, but you pay somebody, you know, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving something to somebody. So give almost never exists by itself, just as that. It almost always has one of those little, little pronouns in front of it, because we're telling who we did it to. Is a That's a good question because people learn learn to conjugate this year. Ooh, digo, and a hard verb to conjugate because it's digo. It's got a go for yo, and then that g goes away for everything else, right? But then it's like an e to i stem changer. Dices, dice, dicen, and then nosotros, of course, because nosotros never gets a stem change. It goes back to decir, decimos. But they see it hardly ever is spoken in a sentence without uh, a me dice, a nos dice, a te dice, a le dice, a les dice. Almost never by itself. Es buena pregunta. Really good question. Okay. Uh, Cindy, you get the A plus for the really bad is an excellent <laughs> question. You may not have known why that was excellent, but it's the nature of that verb. It always implies. So when somebody speaks to you conversationally, they'll never use dice by itself. Huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Quick one too. Yeah, si, 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 dime. Just on page one, uh, this very first sentence there, second one, sabe lo que quiere is, does lo mean it? Like ah. low into and low. And why do I need the low there? Seems why do like, you need the low? Ah. Seems like he could just say, sabe que quiere por su okay. cumpleaños. Y Nora, dame por favor. Sabe, give that whole thing to me. Sabe lo que Whoop. quiere. Lo he que knows what he wants for his birthday. Quiere. Course, quiere. Ah, ah, okay. Sabe lo que quiere. Sabe lo que quiere. Sabe lo que quiere. So when we, okay, the sabe means he knows or she knows, yeah. right? And think of that as you're going to hear lo que used together as a combo. This is, again, one of those chunks of words. Lo que means what? And they did have it together even in the glossary, which was yes. Nice. And that's why in your glossary, when you that that's why those little books are really, really good. Yeah. Because when you look up lo, 
uh, you know, it may have an entry of lo by itself, but it'll have a loke because loke is a super frequent word combination. And notice in English, we only use one word for that, what? So literally, if you were to translate word for word, he knows that which he wants. Well, nobody talks like that in English. Of course not. Okay. So we would express it as he knows what he wants. Loke means what? But it is not the what that is the question what. <laughs> yeah. Which is just K by itself. Right. The word, okay. uh, the word what as, as a question is K. And of mm. course, with an accent mark. But of course, when somebody says that word to you, when that when somebody says K, you know, you don't you don't hear that accent mark. That's mm. only a written accent mark that's there if you read it in writing, right? K. Que quieres? Que quieres? What do you want? Que quieres? Que haces? What are you doing? Right? So um, the what, that's a question word, has an accent mark. It sounds the same, but lo que, lo que, lo que. Lo by itself can mean it. Lo can mean it. Por ejemplo, um, uh, ¿Quieres café? Do you want some coffee? ¿Quieres café? Ah, uh, no gracias. Lo tengo. Lo tengo. Oh. Okay. It I, yeah, lo tengo. It I have. Lo tengo. Ya, ya, ya lo tengo. Already I've got it. Ya lo tengo. Okay. So lo by itself can mean it. And I, when I use lo by itself, it means the, I'm replacing the word cafe completely with the word lo. So okay. that I don't have to, com it's, it's, it, it is used so that you don't have to keep repeating. Do you want coffee? No, I don't want coffee. I have coffee. Okay, you, you know, you don't want to keep saying coffee, 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 because you want to say it to make your communication shorter, shorter, shorter. So lo, if it's by itself, can serve as a little tiny pronoun that replaces a thing, sometimes a person, but often a thing. And it stands in for, it's like the stand in in a movie, you know, <laughs> the action movies and the and director the says cut. They bring the stand because they're going to have a fight scene. Somebody gets punched in the jaw <laughs> and they bring in the stand in actor, right? And um, Lo is the stand in actor, okay. <laughs> right? It's, it, it takes the place of something else. But lo que, those two function together. Uh, okay. Sabe lo que quiere. Um, bien? We're good with that. Yeah. Okay, más preguntas. These are the kinds of questions you should be asking. They're they're really super good. I más or no? Mm. And we're gonna say, you know, make sure you read just one chapter of whatever little booklet you're doing in the coming week. Okay, I'll <coughs> put that as a reminder in our email for end of week. Okay, bien? Uh, fantástico. Uh, vamos a ver. We're going to follow up with one other thing. I believe. I believe I gave you a video to watch, and I just want to emphasize some things on that. So I'm going to share this. We're not going to play the whole video, and I believe I gave this to you. I'll back it up so that you can see. It's, you know, usually I'm I'm very triggered by the whole visual thing. Uh, you have this video to watch about the different words talking about time, right? And it was all in Spanish. So I'm just going to kind of do a summary. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we'll do this from time to time. Um, well, you know, all, many different classes. Um, and and we, we had all those words about frequency, right? And frequency has to do with time. Mm -hmm. So this was a good video to see. But well, one of the other, my, uh, one of my other uh, subliminal things is I also wanted you to watch us that you heard her speaking for 15 minutes in Spanish. It was besides being a, a, a vocabulary thing, not really a grammar thing at all, but a vocabulary thing. It was a good listening uh, experience. And if you didn't watch it, uh, you know, don't worry. But it, it's really more vocab lesson because she went through, there are, are if, you, if you typed into a dictionary, you know, word reference or looked up in a book dictionary, the word time in English, 
and try to find the Spanish words for time, you, you know, come back with different words and you say to yourself, well, which word do I use to say time? And, and one of those words itself splits off and has two different meanings. So first part of her video talked about how tiempo, the word tiempo, uh, can mean uh, both weather, weather, what it does outside, and time. Uh, which I know is kind of a weird concept, but that's just the way it is. Tiempo in Spanish can refer to time. It can refer to weather. And then even more weirdly, the word weather is even either expressed with tiempo or clima, which clima maybe makes a little more sense cognate wise because it looks like climate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Tiempo and clima are pretty interchangeable, pretty synonymous. Like uh, you can use either one to say, what's the weather like? So this is now, you know, we're, we're talking not about time yet, but about weather because tiempo has, you know, weather has multiple words in Spanish too. So just as kind of a recap, if you did not catch it, we can uh, use hace buen tiempo. Literally, it makes good weather. Just how you say the weather is nice. You can say parece que va a ser mal tiempo. It seems like it's going to be bad weather. Okay. And uh, como está el clima hoy? What's the weather like today? Como está el tiempo hoy? Que tiempo hace? Any of those can be the question to ask, uh, I'll make this bigger so it's easier to see, uh, what's the weather like? When you're asking somebody, what's the weather gonna be like? Como esta el clima? Como esta el tiempo? Clima and tiempo are pretty much interchangeable, synonymous to refer to weather. Okay. Uh, sometimes, and this is another ser estar thing, like with es feliz and está feliz. El clima está bueno. It's talking about what is happening in real time. Okay, mm -hmm. está is talking about temporary. What's the weather like right now? But sometimes we refer to general climatic conditions. And then you may very well flip from está to es because you can make a lot of generalizations about weather using S. Because when we make generalizations about the weather, we're not talking about what's happening now, but in general, what it is like, okay? Por ejemplo, uh, el clima, eh, well, okay, eh, el ejemplo, el clima en invierno es muy frío. Uh, the weather is cold in the winter and they're talking about all winters, it's like this, okay? Uh, so sometimes you'll hear es with weather, sometimes esta. If we're talking about real time, what's happening now, it'll be esta. So first of all, we've got this word tiempo, which can mean weather, but clima also means weather. Okay, and then she segs into, well, wait a minute. If I use tiempo, if I use tiempo, to talk about time. When I use tiempo to talk about time, not weather. Uh, and I look up the word time, I plug time in English into a dictionary. Uh, she has a nice break right now because we, you might hear people using tiempo or hora or vez to mean time. Those three words all translate as time, but the context in which they are used is different. So generally, if we're talking about a quantity, cantidad de tiempo, and this is a good way to express it, cantidad de tiempo, a quantity of time, we use tiempo. So, um, los lunes, estoy muy ocupada. On Mondays, I'm very busy. Los lunes estoy muy ocupada. No tengo tiempo. 
I have no time. No tengo tiempo. Uh, tengo mucho tiempo el sábado. I have lots of time on Saturday. So when we talk about a quantity of time and often having a quantity of time, we use tiempo. We don't use hora. We don't use vez. You know, unless you say something like I have two hours, well, then you do use hora. But uh, uh, tengo poco tiempo. Tengo poco tiempo los lunes. I have just a little bit of time on Mondays. Yeah, uh, we're because we're talking about a quantity of time. OK, so that was a very good explanation. Also, tiempo con fecha límite. Fecha límite means a deadline. Fecha límite means a limited date. And we translate that into English with the word deadline. But fecha límite is a two word combo in Spanish and it means a deadline, okay? So we use tiempo when we talk about a deadline. And the examples she gave were espero llegar a tiempo. I hope to arrive on time, a tiempo. On time meaning a deadline. You know, I'm going to be there at a specific time, not before, not after. Uh, Ana entregó el trabajo antes de tiempo. Ana handed a, a the job in ahead of time, antes de tiempo, antes de meaning before. And this means, you know, early, earlier than what she was supposed to. So tiempo can be a quantity. It can be a deadline. Uh, I believe there was one more example. Un ejemplo más. Hay un ejemplo más. Estoy buscando. Oh, yeah. Sí, 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 sí. Uh, tiempo como periodo histórico. Uh, time as, as a segment of time from historical past. En los tiempos coloniales, in colonial times. En los tiempos de mis padres, in my parents' time, meaning when they were young, maybe, right? In my parents' day. And the examples she gave here were, were en los tiempos romanos, en el tiempo de los romanos. So talking about Roman times, you know, way back into antiquity. Um, or the other example used a lot of past, pero uh, yeah, cuando era joven había que abrirles la puerta a las damas. Uh, wow, why did you uh, capitalize puerta? I do not know. Eran los otro, uh, eran otros tiempos. It was a different time. But talking about way, way in the past machine kind of thing. So we can use the word tiempo to talk about time for historical time period and era if you will, uh, we can use it to talk about quantities of time or a deadline, okay? But whenever I talk about this time as in clock time, we no longer use the word tiempo anymore. Anytime I'm referring to a watch type time, Clock time is a good way to express it. I actually like that phrase a lot, clock time. Now we have to switch to the word hora. Hora, because hora literally means hour. Que hora es is literally asking what hour is it? This is why really que hora es is a chunk, is literally a chunk. If you were to literally translate it, it is what hour is it? which is okay, except that we don't use, and if you somebody said, what hour is it? You would know what they were asking you in English. We just never say it that way in English. It is the way they say it. Que hora es? Okay. Uh, llegó la hora, the time has come, meaning the hour to do something has come. Okay. Llegó la, llegó la hora de reparar El aparato, the time has come to fix the appliance because it's broken down, <laughs> all right? Uh, so you'll hear people say things like, llegó la hora, uh, 
que hora es en Buenos Aires. Okay, that one is easy. But look at that bottom one. Uh, es hora de, dor de ir a dormir. It's time to go to bed. You won't use tiempo. Es hora because mom's looking at the clock somewhere, whether it's on her watch or, you know, wherever. Llego a, ¿sí? Es hora de, es hora de cocinar. It's time to cook. People even say, mira la hora, look at the time. You know, <laughs> if you're running really late or, oh my God, it's way later than what you thought. Oh, mira la hora. Wow, look at the time. All right, but they won't say mira el tiempo. People would be like, what? What does that mean? Mira el tiempo, never, but mira la hora, look at the time. Okay. Una pregunta. Sí, sí, dime. Uh, the day belongs to hora, not to ear in the last one. So it's es hora de, it's always es hora es, de. Es hora de. Mm -hmm. Es hora de, and then whatever it is. Okay. Es, o, es hora de limpiar la casa. It's time, time to clean the house. Es hora de despertarte. It's time to wake up. Es hora de, uh, de hacer la tarea. It's time to do the homework. Es hora de leer. It's time to read. Whatever it is time to do. Es hora de. Es hora okay. de. It's just a little, you just have to know it uses that expression. Right. So, hora, uh, her way of explaining that it, hora always talks about a time as we think of it as clock time is a super, super way to express that. And now we're going to come to this word bes. And bes is really, really a big deal. Bes might be used as bes one time. It might be used as beses, plural. And then it's spelled B-E-C-E-S because the Z changes to C when we add the E-S to the end. So, Bes is a moment in time. It is, if you will, an iteration of time, an occasion, an occurrence. Okay. Uh, la próxima, and you, you may, you, bes may be used with a whole, combined with a whole bunch of different kinds of words. La próxima vez, the next time, meaning the next iteration of when this thing happens again. La próxima vez será mejor. Next time it will be better. Uh, ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que nos vimos? When was the last time we saw each other? And then it's not talking about like 10 o'clock. It's probably talking about some day, right? Or a date off the calendar. Uh, so base is a moment in time, an occurrence, an event, an iteration. And that's why we get to things like Una vez, once, or dos veces, twice. You need two words in Spanish to say twice. Dos mm. veces, two times. Tre, tres veces, three times. Okay. Uh, uh, you can combine any number with veces if you know the specific number of times somebody did something. I think that's all the examples we have. Oh, you might hear instead of la próxima vez, next time, la última vez, the last time. Te digo la, por la última vez, I tell you the last time. I'm telling you for the last time. <laughs> so we can combine vez with numbers or first or last, uh, but it talks about an iteration and occurrence separate events, okay? So ves indicates an event, hora indicates an hour out of your day, and tiempo indicates just kind of time in its vaguest, most vast sense, right? Having a quantity of time or an era, of time, something that lasted like a, a century, you know, something like that. Okay, está bien. Sí. Okay. Vale, mm -hmm. I think that is worth knowing because you will, even as you do your little readings, undoubtedly, uh, you will uh, hear 
or and see people using that word base multiple times with different combinations of things. Okay. Bien. Hay alguna pregunta? Any questions there? Sí o no? No. Nada. Okay. Bien. Okay. We're going to seg into this uh, thing of using verbs that are like gustar. And the reason that is sometimes challenging is that, uh, oh shoot, just when I, just when I got comfortable with learning, I've got to have all these five conjugations and uh, throw a curveball at me. But, you know, talking about liking stuff or not liking stuff is, you know, one of those really, really common common things. Uh, you know, we just do it on a daily basis with, with people in stores, with family members, with friends all the time at work, you know, uh, uh, just constantly we talk about liking or not liking stuff. And the actually try to look at, at gustar as instead of being confusing as in being way easier than the other verbs. <laughs> you only need to know gustan, gustan, that's it, right? Gusta for liking a singular thing or liking to do something, no matter how many things you like to do, right? Gustan for liking plural things. But many, many, many verbs will follow that pattern, okay? So that means besides gustar, meaning to like, we've got encantar, and it will always be either encanta or encantan. We've got interesar, to be interesting to somebody. And it'll always be either interesa or interesan. And there with a the verb like interesar, it starts to sound a little more like what we do in English. It interests me, right? Uh, one thing interests me, uh, a bunch of things interest me, or you, or him, or whomever, okay? Uh, importar, and our word importante comes from that thing, but we can use importa or importan. And again, it means something is important to me, or, you know, sometimes besides meaning to be important, we say to matter, and that is often the phrase we use instead of importar. Importa, importan. It matters to me, it doesn't matter to me. It's a way of saying I care or I don't care. If you wanna say I don't care, it's just no me importa because it doesn't matter to me if I don't care, right? So we don't even use the word care in Spanish very much. We use importar. That is what means to care about something because something matters to you. It is important to you. Okay, uh, importar, uh, fascinar. And that is, uh, you know, to fascinate, to something just mesmerizes you. It's got you completely engrossed. Uh, and sometimes things that are opposite of the like are in there. So molesta and molestan are very, very common. Molesta does not mean to molest. It means to bother. <laughs> uh, molesta, something bothers me. Molestan, those things, they bother me. So we have lots and lots of verbs. Actually, you know, I could, I could probably find a list that would have 25 or even 30 words, and that would be overkill. <laughs> Just know that when you hear speak somebody using one of these, and you think, wow, did they conjugate that right? It might be because something is being done to somebody. So the thing to remember is that you only have two verb forms, a singular and a plural, and the little pronoun that's used in front of it will always tells, uh, it will always tell to whom that is being done, right? Uh, to whom it matters, to whom it is interesting, tells who likes or who is interested or who loves something 
or who is fascinated or who is bothered, right? It tells who. So it'll either be me or te or le or nos or les. And the me, the te, the le, the nos, the les, that tells who likes, who loves, who's interested, who's fascinated, who's bothered, you know. We can even use it with sorprender. Me sorprende mucho. Wow, it surprises me a lot. Because something surprise is surprising to me. Something surprises me. Okay, me sorprende mucho. Wow, it really surprises me. So we don't worry about conjugating so much. We just have a singular and a plural. We do conjugate, but we only have two things we use. And then the little pronoun ahead tells who's affected by that. Okay, okay. I'm gonna send you off to our little groups unless we've got, well, in a moment, I'll kind of preview this. We'll put this on share screen now. I want you to practice some of that. Uh, and we're going to use these. We're going to talk about things we like and love. Encantar just elevates gustar, right? We say, I, I love, uh, you know, uh, I love to take pictures. I love to listen to music. And we're not talking about loving a human being, we're, you know, because they're relative. Uh, but we're talking about, you know, a thing that you like doing or a thing that you like, an actual physical thing that you like. So we've got encantar. We're going to talk, we're going to go off into groups and you're going to finish these phrases. Me encanta. I love something. No me interesa. Something doesn't. So some of these are going to be negative and you're going to see where the no goes. No me interesa meaning I don't like it so much. No me interesa, right? Because I'm not interested in it. Uh, uh, a mi esposo or a mi esposa le importa mucho. Uh, my, something matters to my spouse, my partner. And we can stick a mucho on there, meaning giving it more oomph again, right? This really matters to this person. It really matters a lot, mucho. Le importa mucho, okay? Uh, les molesta. They're really bugged by this thing, whether it's doing something or a thing. Uh, a los niños les fascina. Little kids are just fascinated by something. And we can even use par parecer to seem. Nos parece ridículo. It seems, it seems a certain way to us. Nos parece ridículo. Okay, and we're just going to do the top half of these and then come back and see what kind of questions you have. And notice these are all singular. Okay, all of these are singular by design. So you're going to have to talk about an activity or a onesie kind of thing. Bien? Okay, so I want you to do some of that with uh, some independent practice. Almost, I think I'm going to break you out into just two groups so you can kind of bounce ideas off of two different people. And we'll see, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you, I think, cinco minutos, si? Sí. Les parece? Si, sí. okay, cinco minutos. And then we'll come back and see if you had any stumbling blocks or things that were difficult. Okay, and remember to hit your join button.
I didn't mean to exit out of my breakout room. Oh, oops. That's okay. Well, nobody was in twosies. That's okay. <laughs> no importa tanto. It doesn't matter too much. We have, I have a lot of questions. Okay. Está bien. That's good. Yeah. That's a very good thing. Es buena cosa. Es buena cosa tener una pregunta y... Todo eso. Okay. Y... Danica, I'm sorry. I did not mean to exit out. I was trying to clear the window and I pushed to exit. <laughs> we, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all done that. <laughs> so mm. can I ask my question? Sí, sí, sí. Por favor, sí, por favor, claro. Okay. No me interesse Veer or Mara football? Okay. Um, ver. Ver. Okay. ver. No me interesa. You want to make sure that comes out sounding like interesa. Okay. Interesa. Interesa. Oh, there's no me interesa. right there. Okay. Sí. Yeah. No me interesa. Yeah, all right. Teresa is in there. No me interesa, no me interesa. Por ejemplo, uh, uh, me encanta, me encanta ver el tenis y no me interesa ver un partido de béisbol. Uh -huh. Personalmente no me interesa mucho, no me interesa mucho ver un partido de béisbol. ¿okay? A mi esposo le importa mucho hacer ejercicio todos los días. A mi esposo le importa, le importa mucho hacer ejercicio todos los días. A, a mis hijos les molesta hacer ejercicio todos los días. A mis hijos les molesta limpiar la casa. A mis hijos les molesta les molesta trabajar en casa. Oh. Ok, vale, muy bien. Uh, uh, les molesta el trabajo. Ok, uh, bien. So, there are some very good examples. A los niños les fascina jugar, jugar con, uh, con los animales, playing with animals. A los niños les fascina Jugar con los animales. It fascinates them to play with animals. ¿Sí? Uh, a los niños les fascina la ciencia. Science fascinates little kids. Okay. Bien. Pregunta dos. Sí, sí. Uh, a mi esposo le importa mucho hacer or Tamar photos. So he, ah. he takes the pictures, he ed edits them, blah, blah, okay. blah. Uh, I picked us there. Either Tomar photos or Sacar photos. Sacar. Okay. Sacar means to take out, which I know sounds kind of odd, but sometimes people use Sacar photos, Some people, sometimes people use Tomar photos. <laughs> But um, oh, hacer, well, you may, I bet you're going to hear tomar and sacar more. Okay. Tomar and sacar. Tomar fotos y sacar fotos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vale. Bueno. Hay, hay más preguntas. More questions? Back, okay. Back, back to the ver mirar. The, one of, see, the question came up because I answered one. A mi hija le importa mucho mirar las noticias. So, and then uh -huh. we had the discussion of ver, ver versus mirar. Yeah, ver, uh, uh, and this kind of uh, deviates from what we tell you in general. And we tell you in general that mirar really means to focus on something. You look at something and we say you want, look watch at the news, the news. You watch the news. But most people really use ver with oh, that. Yeah. I know you, you see in books, mirar with like mirar la televisión. It's not like nobody will ever say that, 
but I think it is more common for people. Common. To be okay. la, yeah. Anything. Okay. Anytime you're watching like TV, okay. mirar has a more. Uh, okay. So, por ejemplo, mirar is to say, you know, ver means to see something, you know, to perceive things in a very broad sense. So in a way, it seems like, well, you shouldn't use ver for because you're focusing on the news, right? You're paying attention to it. But I, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's just ver, ver las noticias. It's usually when you, when you see a play, when you see something uh, uh, on a TV screen or a movie, it's usually ver, usually. Um, um, uh, uh, but mirar more for, uh, oh, uh, nos gusta mirar los pájaros. We like to watch birds, if you like bird watching. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, por ejemplo, um, a, los, a las madres uh, les gusta uh, mirar a los hijos. They like to watch the kids, meaning they're paying attention to what they're doing. And it doesn't, doesn't mean they perceive that there are little kids around. They're, they're focusing on what the kids are actually doing, right? Because you're, you're, you're watching them, you're kind of guarding them, right? Um, uh, you might say, uh, vamos al museo porque nos gusta mirar Las pinturas, we like to look at paintings. Now there it is, mirar, because you're looking at, you're contemplating that you're really examining the paintings, right? You're not just seeing, uh, I could say, so, aquí es la diferencia. Bello, bello, I see. Bello que hay muchas pinturas en el, en el museo. I see that there are lots of paintings. It just means I'm perceiving they're around. Pero me gusta mirar las pinturas en el museo. I like to look at, and now I'm focusing. Me gusta mirar them is, a, is more, act, more active looking. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, um, and I think that comes I think that difference between mirar and, and, and ver with a, a program is that when you're watching TV, you're kind of just, not, not I know active. you're focusing and I know you're thinking, but we're kind of just sedentary. I guess we should look at it as, you know, it's a sedentary, broad kind of activity. Okay. Okay. Bien. Bueno, hay más preguntas o no? <coughs> Perdón. No? Okay. So notice those all had to be used with singular things. A los niños les fascina la naturaleza. A los niños les fascina el perro muy pequeño. Uh, the little dog really fascinates the kids. It's got to be one thing or an action with these singular verbs. So in all these examples, encanta, interesa, importa, molesta, fascina, uh, parece. These all had to be singular because they're talking about onesie thing. And if you used a, a multiple thing, then that is something you need to adjust. Use it only with a, a singular verb, right? Si, esta bien, entienden? Make sense? Si? Vale? Okay. So now we're going to use that. We're going to go to the bottom half of this and we'll do the share screen so that we make sure everybody knows what these phrases mean. Um, we talk about things we love, we're interested in, blah, 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 blah. Many different verbs, right? Not just gustar. Uh, nos encanta or encantan one or the other. So now we're really focusing on do you need a singular verb or do you need a plural verb? Which way does it go, right? So it may flip flop. Nos encanta or nos encantan. We love something and I want you to talk about some kind of food or foods. But whether you use encanta or encantan will depend on the food. So nos encantan uh, las uvas. We love grapes, but you know, you never talk about grapes as like that one grape. So it's going to be in Cantan because it's always a bunch of grapes, right? Uh, 
a menudo, often, a menudo me duele, or a menudo me duelen. And doler is, that verb talks about something that aches, something that hurts, a body part. We use doler, and this is very different from the other ones because it's not like a, just a mental, like, uh, you know, I, I don't care about something or I do care about something or I'm interested. It's talking about actual physical pain. Uh, a menudo me duele, if one body part hurts, or a menudo me duelen, for maybe both of your hands hurt because you have arthritis. Maybe both of your knees hurt because you got, yeah, you're at a crick in the knee, a little arthritic thing going on there. A mi familia no le importa, or a mi familia no le importan. And the para nada means like zero at all. The para nada is a, a frequent phrase that means not at all. Like you're emphasizing eh, not even once. <laughs> so um, something doesn't matter to my family or some things don't matter to my family. Okay? Uh, a mis amigos les interesa or a mis amigos les interesan. So um, we want you to talk about maybe some kind of sports that your friends are interested in. Uh, a mi mejor amigo or a mi mejor amiga le molesta or a mi mejor amigo le molestan. Whether a lot of things bother them. So maybe a mi mejor amigo le molestan uh, uh, los niños ruidosos, noisy kids, bother my friend. Okay, if your friend is never accustomed to having kids around at all. Uh, en mi casa, muchas veces, a lot, often, muchas veces, many times, many single incidents of time. En mi casa muchas veces no me queda, or en mi casa muchas veces no me quedan. So quedar means to have something left. So you know when you run out of stuff in your fridge, or you run out of stuff in the cover mm. cupboard, this is the quedar because something remains to someone. En mi casa muchas veces no me queda leche. In my house, sometimes I don't have any milk left over, meaning I run out. En mi casa, muchas veces no me queda papel higiénico. I run out of toilet paper. You know, anything no. like that. Sí, sí. Then you said you run out of paper. You didn't have an article in front of that. But don't I usually need an article here? Um, that was you, a question. Oh, like with, okay. With grapes, except for the first one, you said something about with, grapes. With gustar, we always use an article. Uh, with quedar, often it's dropped because you're uh, talking about not really a big category, but just some, okay, oh, cool. so no. No, no me queda leche. Leche is not what they consider a countable thing. It's a liquid. Okay. <laughs> I either got milk or I don't. Right? But on that first one, if I wanted to say, I love apples. Then I would it's going to be, say, yes. Then you use the article. Okay. Me encantan las manzanas. I love apples. Okay. Me encantan las manzanas. Yes. Generally, with, I use an article. But generally, not with, with, with gustar and encantar, you'll use, because you're talking about that whole category. Okay. Yeah. You're saying like, I love all apples. I love, you know, I love all dogs. But with toilet paper, that was specific. You just yeah. ran out of a out yeah. of it. This stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. See. Si. Si. Yeah. Uh, exacto. Okay. Just exactly like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to send you out to work with this a little bit. And, you know, these kind of verbs are just people use them all the time. And then, like, you'll hear one. It's like, oh, I didn't know. And when you hear people use it, it's a 
and, and you think it's not conjugated right, they're probably using it as one of these verbs that is like gustar. Okay, I'm gonna give you maybe, a, maybe more like six minutes. These are a little bit longer ideas. And we'll go into that.
Well, yeah. Okay, you'll need to take yourselves off of mute because it, it mutes you coming out of uh, breakout rooms. I pregunta, so any, any questions on these? Uh, see, okay. on, the, on the very last one, I also had leche, but I had bastante leche. Can that go in, uh, can that be a part of the answer? You could use bastante, si, sí, es posible, si. Sí. Bastante means enough oh. or quite a bit. Either Either one. Yeah, you could. Sí, okay. es posible. Sí, sí. Yeah. Uh, sí, sí. Bueno, sí, sí Cindy. Um, um, the second one down, and it kind of came through on other questions. Uh, when we, if we used uh, La Cabeza, is it simply La Cabeza, in La Cabeza, or De Cabeza? La Cabeza. La Cabeza. A menudo, a, a menudo me duele la cabeza. A menudo le, me duele la cabeza. Sí. Uh, we never say my head hurts. Oddly enough, with uh, body parts, uh -huh. you less frequently use a possessive. Mm. You'll use and I did. Yeah. La, la, yeah. Uh, you will not hear people saying, me duele mi cabeza. Me duele la cabeza. This is just the way they do it. You know, there's not an explanation for me to really tell you. This is just what they do. Um, um, uh, we're going to come back to this verb doler in just a little bit. Yeah, see, Trish. Um, this may be a basic question, but anyway, I said, on mis amigos les into the sun in el baseball or just el no, baseball? Just el baseball. El baseball, sí. Les interesa el baseball. It's so confusing. Any kind of baseball, they love it. They love okay. it all. Okay. Okay. Right. No matter what kind of, no matter who's playing, they like that sport in general. El baseball. Yes. And we say interested in, but what you're literally saying is baseball interests them. Okay. Yeah. That, that will help. That, okay. that, that is how all of these verbs work. Something, right. a body part hurts, is aching me or them or whoever it is that it hurts, right? Baseball is interesting to them, right? Watching science fiction is important to them. Reading uh, for their work is important to them. So that that is why these, all these verbs work that way. Bien, bien, que mas? What else might you have a question about? Algo más. Uh, is this something that you want like a separate set of practice pages about for the sure. week? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, because these are kind of, they're, they're like a curveball in a way, right? They're, they're actually easier to use than your regular verb, but, but on the other hand, uh, you know, and, and they're a curveball because we're not going into all those different conjugations as a general rule. Um, and let me show you just really, really briefly because we have that question about uh, cabeza. And uh, I want to show you on this particular video that I had assigned. Um, uh, the reason this is a big deal, you know, you could take that verb doler and this, unlike the other ones, is talking about something that is a really a, an action. I mean, to say something doesn't matter. It's a real cerebral thing, right? Something is interesting. It's a cerebral thing. But wow, doler is a physical thing. So out of all these verbs, doler is the one that's a real physical thing. Something hurts. If you were to look at how do we conjugate doler? It's got a U-E stem change. And you could literally say, well, it goes into all these conjugations, but you hardly ever hear it can be, but in very limited situations, is it used as duelo or wow, even less dolemos. You know, me duelo mucho might mean it pains me very much in kind of a poetic, oh, I feel your pain kind of thing. But hardly ever do you hear people using that. Most of the time, you hear people only looking at that bottom tier, 
duele and duelen, duele and duelen. And I'm not kidding you, 98% of the time, that's how you're going to hear doler, duele and duelen. And they always talk about a body part. And, you know, this hurts me. Uh, uh, these allergy season people, yeah, these hurt me, right? Uh, if you got a cold, this might hurt. If you got a toothache that a bunch of teeth hurt, it's going to be duelen if more than one tooth hurts. So it's always either duele, a body part hurts, or duele, a body part, uh, more than one body part hurts. So, me duele la cabeza, you can see it there, right? Me duele la cabeza, and it's always la cabeza, los dedos, los la. ojos, right? Your knees hurt. Los Las pies. Los pies, yeah, my feet hurt if you're standing all day, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. Me duelen los pies. Well, my feet hurt. Uh, caminé, caminé 10 millas. I walked 10 miles. Me duelen los pies. My feet hurt because I walked 10 miles. Well, sure. So, but it'll always be the word the that we use with the body. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so, me duele la cabeza. Uh, le duele el brazo. Her arm hurts. The arm causes pain to her, right? Le duele el brazo. And it's not su brazo, <laughs> it's el brazo. We just use the articles. Our feet hurt. And we've got a pies one here. Nos duelen los pies. Nos duelen los pies. Our feet hurt us. But it's duelen, plural, because pies, there are two feet. Yeah. Who, and they're hurting us, so it's nos duelen, uh. nos duelen, right? Uh, me duelen los pies means my feet hurt. Te duelen los pies means your feet yeah. hurt. Uh, okay. Yeah, the me, the te, the nos, the le, the les is who it's happening to. And this is the one out of all those verbs that are like uh, a gustar, that's a very physical kind of thing. So um, I also want you to think about this. If you talk about pain and you say, uh, I hurt myself, we won't use doler, we'll use a different verb yet. I'll talk about that next week. Sometimes you say, my head hurts, my teeth hurt. God forbid, that's an expensive one, right? My elbow hurts. <laughs> You know, my knees hurt. Uh, so, okay, fine. But sometimes you want to say, uh, he got injured, right? He got injured in a car accident. Uh, the kid fell down and hurt himself. That's going to be a different verb because then it's not talking about a specific body part, but he injured something. Else. We'll talk about that next week. Okay. La semana que viene. There is a different verb they use to express that. This is when a body part is aching causing pain to somebody. Bien? Está bien? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go through uh, a little bit of this. Uh, we want to talk about how to politely do this. And, and this is something I want you to think about. Um, this is a little different video that I don't want you to just watch on your own because, because it is all in Spanish and it can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes you want to say you like or you don't like something, but there are certain times when just saying I don't like it is going to sound super pushy and they don't like that so much. <laughs> it comes off as being very in your face in Spanish. It's a cultural thing. Okay, so I want to watch at least part of this video, and we may not get through all of it, but I want to kind of show you. Uh, okay, now I'm going to preface it with this. Sometimes, you know, you might want to say, uh, you got a thing about spiders, or you got a thing about snakes, you know, I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders. You know, is that going to offend anybody? No, not really, right? <laughs> uh, I, I don't like, 
I don't like cleaning toilets. Is that going to offend anybody? No. I mean, it's got to be done. But is it a, is it an offensive topic or something that may, may, may uh, you know, just, you know, tweak them the wrong way? No, of course not. But sometimes somebody says, hey, want to go to restaurant X? Or they might say, hey, want to go see this movie? Or, hey, uh, do you want- How wanna... about them Cubs? Yeah, yeah, okay, so sure, yeah. All right, in a situation like that, if you just think in English, you might respond, I don't like science fiction, or I don't like that team. There might be some people who are somewhat put off by that, okay? In Spanish, to say no me gusta has a stronger meaning, and we're gonna show you how. And this is really a cultural thing. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit over today, perdón. I am so sorry about this. But I need to kind of give you some context because he's gonna go kind of fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hace buen tiempo. Qué va, tío. No me mola. Paso. Okay. That, so now this is a very 20-year-old kind of response. I'm going to tell you that. Me mola is a more slang for a, a negative of no me gusta. And this is only in Spain. Latin America, they don't use the mola thing. But me mola means I like something. So no me mola is I don't like it. Uh, so he, he just, uh, and I'm trying to remember what exactly the activity was, uh, uh, but you know, he proposed, Hey, let's go do this this weekend. Let's go, let's go parasailing or, you know, whatever he's proposed some kind of activity. Ah, uh, uh, go on, man. Tio means uncle, but in Spain, they use Tio to say, Hey guy, Hey man, uh, no me mola. I don't like it. Paso. I pass meaning I'm not going to do it. This thing, if he said no me mola or no me gusta, that comes on real strong, real strong and may offend somebody. So a couple 20 year olds, maybe they don't care, but somebody in polite society may not Hola. like it so much. Paz. Oye, he preparado lentejas. ¿Quieres comer conmigo? Oh, no, muchas gracias. Eh, prefiero comer en mi casa cuando llegue. Ah. Now, here is a polite way to say, I don't like, but we don't use the word don't like at all. If you yeah. really don't like something, like you don't like a certain kind of food, right? Somebody wants to go to a Thai restaurant, you don't like Thai. Instead of saying, I don't like Thai food. Well, obviously if they propose going to a Thai restaurant, they like it. So instead of saying, well, I don't like Thai, because that's how it comes off sounding. Ah, muchas gracias, prefiero, I prefer. So instead of saying, no me gusta, I don't like, when somebody proposes an activity to you, it's seen as much, much more take the, take your foot off the pedal and let go of the world, but say prefiero. You give prefiero and the alternative. Instead of saying, no me gusta, You say prefiero, I prefer, and you give a different alternative. And so in other words, what it's saying that is we don't say no me gusta, I don't like that thing that you love. <laughs> I'd rather do this instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is always seen culturally in Latin American and in Spanish, Spanish, either way, as being a, a much less pushy way of saying, well, I don't, instead of you're saying you don't like it, you give an alternative. Prefiero. So that's in red to say, don't say no me gusta. Say prefiero. Prefiero comer en mi casa. Ah, I prefer to eat at home when I get there. Okay. And all this cuando llegue is, is a subjunctive thing. It's not really important that you know that. Vicente? Oye, ¿quieres que vayamos este fin de semana a ver un partido de fútbol? Eh, Wanna watch a soccer game. Es que no soy muy fan del fútbol. Ah, here's another way to say I don't like without using the words I don't like. Es que, 
es que is always, it's just that. And now es que signals something is coming that is going to be the opposite. It's something is going to be kind of negative. Ah, no soy muy fun. I'm not a big soccer fan. So instead of saying, I don't like soccer, which because he obviously wants to go to the game, he does. It's not like thrown in his face. It's just saying, oh, I personally, it's, it's like the, oh, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> the breakup line. Yeah, <laughs> I'm breaking up. Oh, it's not that you're bad. It's that I'm just, yeah. No soy muy fan. So he gives. Hola, hispanófilos. Hey, hispanófilos. So he gives a lot of this. We're going to look at a couple. It has a really strong connotation. Entonces, porque mind. hoy vamos a hablar de diferentes formas de decir no me gusta en español. Different ways to say I don't like without using the words no me gusta. Decir me gusta o no me gusta no está mal, es, lo, es correcto. It's correct. Grammatically, it's correct. Culturally, not so cool. Es, lo, es, lo, es de las primeras cosas que tú aprendes cuando empiezas a estudiar español. Pero decir no me gusta puede ser muy directo. Puede ser muy directo. It can be very direct. Meaning it's too forceful. Y puede sonar un poco mal educado. It can sound a little rude. Mal educado looks like badly educated. What that really means, mal educado, is rude. A veces. Sometimes. A veces. Sometimes. Dependiendo del contexto, depending on the context. So yeah, saying I don't like snakes isn't going to offend anybody. Unless there are scientists maybe who say, and even then, they know, right? <laughs> it's that whole thing of when somebody's proposing an activity. It's considered rude to just say, well, I don't like doing that. What you do is you just sort of say, well, I'm, I'm not really big on that myself. Or you say, I prefer to do, and you give an alternative. So the point of the video is that it can be, depending on the context, very, very forceful, and sometimes even offensive to say, I don't like. Dependiendo del contexto. Pero hoy te voy a enseñar diferentes formas de decir no me gusta, pero cambiando un poco tus palabras. Para... So we're changing up the words you use to say this, so that it's not so in your face. El mensaje no sea tan directo y la otra persona no se pueda ofender con tus palabras. So the person won't get offended by you're turning it down. You're going to give an alternative, and we'll, I'll, I'll give you a way to Entonces, practice that for next week. Diferentes formas de decir no me gusta. Espera, espera, antes de empezar, quiero decirte muy rápido, muy rápido. Okay, and he's going to have a little self-promotion thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and we're going to go through parts of this because he does a whole thing in Spanish. En la vida, si no quieres hacer o no quieres mm, ampliar con más vocabulario, puedes decir no me gusta mucho. So, oddly enough, here's one of the ways that you soften the blow of no me gusta. Sometimes you just add the word mucho. And it sounds like that's such a little thing, but that can be the difference between offending somebody and not. Oddly enough, no me gusta mucho. It's like saying I'm not a big fan of. Okay? Añades ese mucho y ya... Es un poco menos directo. Vale, ok, no me gusta. No, gracias, es que no me gusta mucho. It's just that I don't like it so much. And, yeah, adding that word mucho is just a vale. softer way. Pero yo te voy a enseñar un vocabulario un poquito más avanzado, un vocabulario, pues ya... So he says, I'm going to show you some more advanced... Intermedio okay. alto, intermedio alto, muy alto. Bueno, vamos a empezar con, con la primera. La primera es, simplemente puedes decir, no, gracias, prefiero... O incluso preferiría. Ah, so you can use prefiero, I prefer, or preferiría. And I will say, don't worry about that last one, which is really, really long. That is what they call a conditional. And, and preferiría just means I would prefer. It's a super polite way of saying I prefer. So this is the number one way. It is giving an alternative. Prefiero. 
I prefer to do something else. Okay. Uh, prefiero nadar. I prefer going swimming. Prefiero uh, uh, ir a un restaurante italiano. I prefer going to an Italian restaurant if you don't want the Thai. Okay. Uh, so, prefiero with an infinitive. I prefer to do something else. You're giving an alternative. Y añades tu opción. Por ejemplo, alguien te invita a ir al cine. No, gracias. Preferiría tomar algo. O no, gracias. Prefiero que vayamos a tomar algo. Puedes decirlo como tú quieras, pero al decir ese prefiero, básicamente le estás diciendo a la otra persona que no te gusta ese plan, que no, no te parece buena idea, y estás proponiendo tu idea, pero de una forma and que no. He's explaining va in a longer way that it's just way of giving an alternative to the person. Here, here's the number two puedes, thing. Puedes añadir ese mucho siempre. No. No estoy muy interesado en. Or no me interesa mucho. Is less in your face than no me gusta. And I'll put these in a, a list form as well. So this is a way that's, again, less, less offensive. Más formal. Esto uh, no me entusiasma. I'm not real excited about. No me causa entusiasmo. No me entusiasma. I'm not so excited about. So that's a third note. I'll put these in a list for you so you don't have to make notes now. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Gusta, pero como somos muy educados. Uh, es que, it's just that I don't like, yeah, museums. Uh, oh, let's find a different one. I think he had a, yet another way. Have you another note? Yeah. Es que and es que. Es que is sort of like saying it's just that, and then you give, again, an alternative for what you want to do. Uh, ah, bueno, here's a good one that it's easy to use. No es de mi estilo. It's not my style. Uh -huh. It's just a way of saying it's not for me. Yeah, it's not for me. It's not for me. It might be great for you. It's just not great for me. Okay. So he's got a bunch of different ways of turning down invitations to do something. Uh, no es lo mío. And I'll put these in a list for you. No es lo mío. Um, so he's got some examples of this, and I don't want to go too far over because we've got kind of far over. But I'm going to put these in a nice little list for you and send it out with the email. Okay. What I want us to do is uh, I am going to set up some scenarios for some role playing next week. So when you get in the scenario, when you come into class next week, uh, you're going to have a scenario of, hey, how about if we do X, Y, Z? How about if we go hiking? How about if uh, we go to a Chinese restaurant? You know, do you want to do you want to eat a Chinese or eat Chinese tonight? And and you're going to say you're going to kind of use some of these things off the list to find a politer way of turning down the one idea without saying, I don't like. So I'm gonna have you role play ways of, of responding to a proposal, okay? With something that indicates it's not really what you like, but you're gonna give an alternative or just say that it's not quite your thing. Entienden, understand? Yes. So you're going to go in and do a role playing kind of scenario and you're going to turn somebody down, but in a more polite way. And then okay. make sense. Okay. And, and I'll set this little scenarios up and I'll give you a list of, of ways to, to uh, say that you don't really enjoy that kind of thing. Okay. Vale. Okay. Vale.
Eso es todo. Eso es todo. We're all done for today. Uh, I did want to ask you if you, I, I've, got, I've got two ways we can go with a new idea after we do the I don't like role playing. Um, we can go through some negative words that sometimes need that double negative because that came up last week. Would you rather do some of these negative words like nobody and never and I don't do this either? Or would you rather go into something that we call um, reflexive verbs, which are ways to say uh, sitting down, waking up, getting up. They're special words that they use say a lot. Yeah. Instead of mete nos le, it's mete nos se. Is there, do you guys have a preference for which topic? I'm not familiar at all with that second. Okay. No. Yeah, the second one is one we don't have a real good uh, equivalent to. So in other words, verbs like wash your hands, use uh, se lava las manos, one washes one's hands. Verbs like wake up or go to bed or fall asleep, use the word se a lot. Mm. And they're actions that technically we do to ourselves. Even, even the me llamo, me llamo is that kind of verb. Me llamo, te llamo, como te llamas? Como se llama? What's his name? Literally saying, how does he call himself? And it's a whole yeah. category of verbs. And you may come across a few of those in your readings, actually. Um, or do you guys have no special preference for what order we take these topics? Reflexive, por favor. Reflexive. Reflexive. Yeah. The double negatives. The double negatives. Have we done much on that? We no. haven't done a whole lot on that. We I, I, we can fit both of those in very easily this summer. Reflexive, reflexive. Lips. Um, I think I, the, the reflexives you're going to yeah. start to see coming up a lot in the reading. Right. Uh, poco a poco, little by little. You know, even verbs <laughs> like sit down because you take your, your bottom and you set it down on the chair. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'll give that a little bit of thought as to where we start. We, we may start with a little bit of double negatives because that's kind of a vast thing. And we may take it in little, some little dribs and drabs so that we come back to it and remind ourselves, you know, do some frequent review. Okay, that sounds good to me. Okay. We will mix that up a little bit. We'll maybe do some double negatives. I'll give you some pages in the book you can check with. We'll start with some double negatives and we're going to do a lot with reflexes this summer. Okay. Vale. Magnifico. Okay.